Hello and welcome to my haul video for the month of October 2020. Apologies for the lighting in this one. It started to get a bit dark earlier recently and I'm recording this. Oh, well, it's pitch black outside, so nothing but my kitchen lights for the lighting on this one. So not the best conditions, but probably something I'm going to have to deal with for a little while now. Let's go through this big stack of books. So anyone who's been watching the last few hauls that I've been doing probably knows that I've been on a bit of a uh, DC Deluxe Edition kick at the minute. Um, so kicking that off again. This is the Animal Man Deluxe Edition by Grant Morrison. I've been really wanting to get the omnibus of this uh, for a, a while now, but it seems like it's going to be one of those things that's going to be really uh, expensive and uh, difficult to track down. So making do here. Um, this is one of two volumes. But yeah, all I really care about is uh, reading the story. I've heard amazing things about this run. So I know the comic board guys did a a read through of it recently and um, yeah them discussing it made me kind of want to pick it up as well so yeah thanks guys we have justice um jim kruger alex ross uh basically bought this for the alex ross artwork as i'm sure a lot of people have don't really know anything about this story other than it's probably gorgeous to look at so anything that alex ross is doing the interior artwork for is is probably worth a pickup so that's why i got that one uh, staying on the Justice League train, um, here we've got Justice League Origin, the Deluxe Edition. So this is the New 52 run, um, which was Jeff Johns and Jim Lee kicking off the kind of younger, refreshed uh, Justice League. And um, yeah, I read this, well, I read the first part of this run as it was coming out in single issues back when they did the New 52. Um, I remember it being quite simple, but, you know, blockbustery and kind of fun. Uh, I never finished the run, though. I think I got too caught up in all the other cool little titles that were coming out at the time to be interested in something so kind of um, by the numbers. But um, definitely remember it being very solid. So, yeah, I always wanted to go back and check this out. So, yeah, I'm glad DC have uh, brought out this book, collecting the uh, first couple of arcs on that, that run. So this one, uh, the Shazam Deluxe Edition, basically started off as backup stories for the previous Justice League run I was just uh, mentioning. So um, I'm familiar with a couple of the issues worth of, of this. It was done as backups in the end of a couple of the issues starting, I don't know, like halfway through the, the run. Uh, but it was Jeff Johns, Gary Frank, yeah, um, love those guys when they're working together on a book it's always worth checking out really happy dc decided to put this one out as as one book so uh next we've got the gotham by gaslight deluxe edition which just came out as well um something i've been meaning to read for i don't know like 15 years now i think but it's one of those things that um back in the day i i had a friend who was um I think this was one of the only Batman stories he ever read, but he loved it. And uh, yeah, um, at the minute I'm actually reading uh, through Hellboy, uh, the library editions. So um, yeah, I'm in a bit of a Mike Mignola mood. Uh, I, lo I love uh, his artwork. It's yeah, it's absolutely stunning. So um, if anything, I'd check it out just for that. But I really do appreciate the old... Um, Elseworlds stories that DC used to put out so yeah um, basically anyone who's not familiar with this is uh, Batman back in like the 1800s I think is uh, investigating the Jack the Ripper murders obviously it's going to be a bit of a gritty noir detective story uh, but with a bit of an Elseworlds spin so yeah who wouldn't want to check that out so yeah thanks DC lastly of the deluxe editions here so we've got Robin Year One so this is Chuck Dixon I thought I'd be rude not to get this one I've been kind of picking up all the other DC Deluxe Edition Year One books that have been coming out recently. It's been Green Arrow, Nightwing, Justice League Year One, Wonder Woman Year One. I think the only one I'm kind of missing now is the Batgirl Year One, which I'll probably try and hunt down at some point soon as well, just because it'll annoy me if I don't get that one. I know absolutely nothing about this story, but hey, that is the last uh, DC Deluxe Edition I picked up this month. So sticking with the rest of the DC side of the haul, oh, bear with me while I lift this one up it is a bit of a beast um this is the final crisis omnibus i think it was last month the third batman uh, by grant morrison omnibus was finally released so something i want to kind of 
get stuck back into now that the whole run is there. I thought it'd be uh, good to kind of revisit Final Crisis as well. Um, obviously that kind of happens in the middle of the run and has some ramifications for the events in that run. It's not something you have to read. I know that when you get to that part of the run, uh, it does kind of like a bit of a summary page, if I remember rightly, where it explains some of the key things that have happened. Yeah, I know this collects basically everything that was Final Crisis related back from when that was coming out. I know I was reading uh, quite a few of the tie-ins, but nowhere near everything. So there's obviously quite a lot to this event. And uh, yeah, if you can see the size of this beast here, um, yeah, it really is one of the biggest Omnis. I think I've got um, got it for a fairly decent price, so I thought, hey, why not? Anyone who watched my last month's haul also probably remember that I picked up Volume 5 of Absolute Sandman. Um, I've had Volumes 1 to 4 for years, but never thought to pick up the fifth volume. And that kind of got me thinking, so obviously... Yeah, Sandman Overture, which is kind of like the prequel series that explains how Morpheus ended up where he did at the start of the run. Yeah, this was something I never really checked out at the time because I, I assumed they were going to do an absolute edition at some point of it. Um, but it took me quite a while to get around to getting it. So yeah, I think getting the volume five last month basically kind of spurred that one. So here it is, uh, ready to sit next to all the others on my shelf. Um, <clears throat> really looking forward to this one, especially because the artwork um, from J.H. Williams, um, everyone always kind of asks what format they should be picking up Sandman and you know, do I get the absolutes? Do I get the omnibuses? Uh, I guess now as well, there's the, um, there's the deluxe edition route you could go through, uh, although it's DC, so who knows if they're going to see that one through to the end. They're currently on volume two, I think. But for me, uh, this is probably one of the best reasons to get all the books in the absolute format because this guy, you really would want to see his art in the absolute biggest size that you can. Just the, the stuff I have seen of this, um, this book, the interiors are absolutely stunning. So I'm really happy to finally have this one. Yeah, looking forward to that. Absolute Sandman volumes 1 to 5 plus Overture is the entirety of the Sandman run. Really happy to have that completed finally. It would have really annoyed me not to have picked up Absolute Death as well. Um, I've not read any of this. This is um, completely new to me, but I uh, hear a lot of good things about it. I know a lot of people hold it in quite high regard. Now I'm finally complete with that whole collection, so uh, that's going to basically stop my OCD from going into overdrive for that one. Ooh. And coincidentally this month, uh, this wasn't coordinated at all, but um, I did end up picking up this uh, Death Funko Pop uh, from, I think it was from um, Pop in a Box uh, website. I didn't know they did any Sandman Pops, uh, so excited when I saw that one pop up. Um, while I was there, just to make it worth the postage, I did pick up another couple of uh, comic related pops. So here we've got Dr. Harleen Quinzel, massive fan of uh, Batman animated series, one of my two favorite cartoons of all time, along with Samurai Jack. Uh, I know everyone's getting a bit tired of Harley Quinn. Uh, I feel like she's being quite overused uh, in the last few years since she got popular, you know, after like Suicide Squad came out and things like that. So. But one of the most refreshing reads I've had this year was Harleen, which really goes into depth of, of kind of Harleen Quinzel rather than Harley Quinn. Um, when I saw this, I was like, yeah, I've got to buy that. Lastly, uh, for the pops, I've got this uh, Game of Us Mr. Negative. Uh, this is from the Spider-Man PS4 game, but to me, I'm just going to forget that part of it. He's basically, to me, he's from the, the Dan Slot run on Spider-Man. I absolutely love uh, the kind of brand new day, uh, big time Dan Slot era of Spider-Man. That's my era of Spider-Man. So when I saw this, yeah, I just had to pick him up. So, and that's it for my DC books this month. Let's move on to the Marvel stuff. So one of the books I read this month was the um, Mr. Miracle 
series from Tom King. Uh, so that was his kind of big, highly acclaimed DC 12 issue series that um, I think a lot of people loved. But I know before DC kind of snatched him into an exclusive, he was over at Marvel. And I think one of the things he did there that kind of got everyone's attention was the Vision series. I know it's something a lot of people have gone on about being really, really good. So I thought I'd pick up this oversized hardcover. I think as well, this might end up being one of the books that slightly inspires some of the stuff they might do in the, the WandaVision TV series that will be coming out soon. So I thought I'd, I'd pick this one up and um, see what the fuss was about. But yeah, I really did love Mr. Miracle. I thought it was amazing. So yeah, I've got some high hopes for this one. It's a nice oversized hardcover and yeah. So I think it was last month where I ended up picking up the Frank Miller Daredevil omnibuses. So both the um, the omnibus itself and the companion book. So I saw this one was available and it wasn't too expensive. So I thought I'd pick it up as well to kind of go alongside those ones. Um, so this is Electra from Frank Miller and Bill Sinkovich. So what's interesting about these Omnis, uh, they have the Marvel Omnibus logo at the bottom. They all kind of go together uh, as, a, as a kind of design with this kind of slanty diagonal design. Um, and yeah, it would have annoyed me not having this one to go alongside the, the Daredevil ones on my shelf. And just to give you an idea what that would look like, um, there you go. Um, so yeah, I don't know why they've got the Omnibus logo at the bottom on these books. always found that strange, but yeah, um, it does look good. Just when you put it next to all your other Omnibuses, it does stand out a little bit, which is annoying. So I think I'm going to display these like right at the start before all the other Omnis, um, just as their own little thing. But yeah, really excited to, to read this. I've not read any Electra, I don't think. and. I think it was the cartoonist Kayfabe guys did a bit of a run through of, I think it was an artist edition of um, this Electra run with the Bill Sinkovich art and it looked absolutely stunning. Um, anyone who's not seen that video go check it out. Cartoonist Kayfabe that's Ed Piscor who did the X-Men Grand Designs and Jim Rugg. They both kind of get together uh, and review a lot of books go through like page by page and they're both artists and they talk about the artwork in each book they go through. Um, they have some really interesting insight into it. So anyone who's not seen that, go check it out. Follow it on YouTube. Uh, it's a really, really cool channel. Really happy to have this kind of three book set in its entirety now, which is, um, yeah, which is good. I'm kind of starting to amass a lot of the um, Daredevil omnibuses now. So um, I know this one is technically not a Daredevil omnibus by name. Um, but it really is. Uh, apparently it's just, I don't know, Marvel didn't really want to put Daredevil in the title or something, but it's Marvel Knights. Um, it's the Daredevil run by uh, Joe Casada. It collects Daredevil 0 to 15, Daredevil Father 1 to 6, Daredevil 1, material from Marvel Knights Double Shot 1. So out of all of those books, how many of them are Daredevil? How many of them are Marvel Knights? So yeah, obviously, let's call the book Marvel Knights. I don't know if someone at DC was in charge of naming things on that day, but um, yeah, it makes about as much sense as any DC decision. But hey, I think some of this is going to be written by Kevin Smith and art by Joe Casada. I do love his art. I, I love it when he does kind of variant covers and stuff for books I've been reading. I do like Kevin Smith films as well, but I've never read, I don't think I've read any of his comic book work, so I'd be interested to see where, what this book is. Um, so like I said, I've been kind of amassing a lot of the Daredevil Omnis, uh, and I think I might be down to the last couple, and um, this being one of them. So this is actually volume two of the Ed Brubaker, Michael Lark run on Daredevil. So yeah, I don't have volume one, um, but I figured um, I might as well get this one while I can get it and then try and hunt down volume one at some other point. I know uh, Highland G is currently in the same boat as me, so good luck to you as well on your quest. Um, hope we don't end up in a bidding war on eBay for any of the same listings. I love Ed Brubaker's other work, like his criminal stuff and various other stories, uh, Fatal, uh, Kill or Be Killed. Um, uh, really interested to see how his run on Daredevil was because, yeah, he really does know his kind of gritty crime noir. So I'm assuming this was an excellent run. Hopefully it won't take me too much time and money to hunt down volume one, but 
yeah, I think that's going to eat away at me, sat on my shelf all on its lonesome for a while. So hopefully I don't get stupid and uh, fork out more than I should do for it either. Thought I'd better pick this one up because it's actually going quite cheap. So one thing I've read this year was the first volume of Donny Cates' Venom Run, uh, the oversized hardcover. Um, I think it was the first, say, 12 issues of the run. I really enjoyed it. And there was a lot of stuff also coming out from Donny Cates at the time, like his Silver Surfer and Thor. Yeah, all of it has been getting a lot of buzz. I want to try and pick up as much of it as I can do. So when I saw that they were doing the Absolute Carnage omnibus, I thought, hey, um, better get that now so that when all of his other stuff eventually comes out in uh, omnibus form as well, I've, I can read the whole lot. Uh, yeah, I've got no idea what this is about other than I think it kind of spins out of his run on Venom. It's the same creative team, so yeah, his uh, artist Ryan Stegman is also joining him on this one. Um, very symbiote heavy. I am looking forward to all the rest of it coming out in uh, yeah, oversized hardcover or omnibus format. So yeah, I uh, thought I'd pick this one up while I could. And for the second Beastie omnibus of the month, there we have Marvel's version of The Absolute Beast. Uh, so this is the War of the Realms omnibus, and as you can see, it is an absolute beast. I think it's the biggest Marvel omnibus that exists now, uh, page count-wise. I know it's in the kind of 1,500 pages realm. Really excited that they've done this book, purely because I was reading the very start of Jason Aaron's Thor run um, back when it was coming out. And absolutely loved it. I thought it was amazing. It was back in the Marvel Now kind of days where it was uh, Thor, God of Thunder. Um, he started his run with 12 issues uh, with uh, himself and Esad Ribic. Ribic? I don't know how you say his name. But um, yeah, absolutely gorgeous book that was. And I really dug what they did there with the the kind of three Thors. From there it kind of span into the Thor series with female Thor that appears and if you don't know who it is I won't spoil it just in case. I've read some of that as well but never finished and then kind of lost my way with uh, single issues for a while. So I never actually finished the kind of epic story that he was building. I don't think I'm gonna bother even reading this one until the rest of the Omni set come out. So yeah, this big beast is just going to sit here and take up ridiculous amounts of space on the shelf until then. And that's it for my Marvel books this month. So I got a few Dark Horse books this month as well. One of the series I've heard a lot of people going on about at the minute, uh, basically because of these massive gorgeous library editions, uh, Black Hammer. So uh, this is a series I've not read in its entirety, but I did read some of the start of it digitally on Comixology. I thought it was really cool. But yeah, seeing these books come out, I thought, hey, I better jump on these before they get hard to get. <laughs> and a FOMO in action. But Dark Horse, in general, they just do ridiculously good value for many books. So I thought, yeah. Let's get them while they're good for the value before, I don't know, if they go out of print and they skyrocket, I'll be kicking myself. So um, yeah, this is uh, volume one. So I've read a portion of this, at least. I'm not sure how many issues this collects, but um, yeah, one to 13 and Black Hammer giant sized annual. So I know that's the first chunk of the story. I know this one kind of just came out, I believe, or came out not long ago. So I thought I'd pick up volume two as well. Um, Again, Dark Horse books are stupidly good value for money. So um, yeah, those two actually didn't cost me too much to pick up. Um, and then I think I read somewhere that technically the reading order doesn't go volume one library edition, then volume two library edition. I think somewhere in there you're supposed to read the book that I think literally just came out, the World of Black Hammer library edition. So obviously, um, yeah, I'm weak. I know this one's not quite as thick. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Jeff Lemire. So I always say anything by him is kind of worth picking up and checking out. Um, you can't go too far wrong, at the very least. Like, I don't think I've actually ever read anything that I didn't like by Jeff Lemire. Um, some of his stuff I like more than others, but I don't think I've ever read anything that I've been disappointed by. So um, that goes for his 
create your own stuff or is um you know work at like dc and stuff so um yeah i thought hey let's get these while i can get them uh, so that was it for Dark Horse books this month, but speaking of Jeff Lemire, I did pick up this little book here called Frog Catchers. So this is a really, really short story uh, that he did. Uh, this is just a standard size hardcover, but it's kind of like a really short written and drawn story from Jeff Lemire. I actually stood and read this in my kitchen as I was walking past my kitchen table one day. I noticed it was there. I picked it up and started flipping through it. And just in the space of however long it took, I just stood there and read the whole thing. Yeah, that gives you a clue of how short it is. But um, I really liked it. It was quite contemplative. I won't really say what it's about. Um, you can Google it and read the synopsis if you're interested. But it's the kind of book that, yeah, I'm probably just going to keep and just pull out every now and again when I uh, when I feel like thinking about like life and death and uh, you know, feeling a bit somber and all that. So um, I'm not even sure who actually publishes this book. Um, Gallery 13. Um, so yeah, never heard of Gallery 13 before. Um, but yeah, uh, it's the kind of story where I feel like it's just like just a little idea that you had one day doesn't really need to get too deep in it he's just kind of exploring one aspect of, of the idea that he had and um, sometimes that's what you need it's just a nice little kind of palette cleanser between bigger reads as well this month I finally got it I did it Invincible Compendium 3 so I've had the first compendium for I don't know probably 10 years now it feels like um, so I read that a long time ago never got around to getting the second volume but I did get the second volume, I think it was at the start of this year, and started with volume one again to reread it, and then got, I don't know, like two thirds of the way through volume two and started getting petrified of the idea that I was running out. So I slowed down a bit um, on my read of that because uh, I really wanted to get volume three and it was getting quite expensive on Amazon. So I held off for a while till I saw it get a bit cheaper and it finally did. Um, so yeah, really excited now that I can pick Invincible back up again because I was going through it over the summer. I started reading it again and absolutely loved it. Uh, what a great series. Um, yeah, anyone who's not read this, if you're a fan of superhero stuff, check it out. It's excellently done. Um, yeah, really excited to get stuck back into that again. Uh, so also one that came out this month from IDW, the IDW collection of Ninja Turtles Volume 11. So this one's got Casey Jones on the front, um, similar spine as the rest of the uh, deluxe editions. And yeah, I'm so far behind on these books now, but I'm still buying them just because, yeah, I don't want to fall behind and have tons to catch up on. So I figure I might as well still get them as they're coming out. But yeah, what a series. I need to go back and reread it from the start again. I'm, I feel like I'm that far behind now that I might as well just start again. But I feel like that's going to be a really good binge read at some point soon. Obviously, there's uh, the Turtles story, The Last Ronin, has just come out, uh, issue one of that. It's very exciting times for, for the Turtles at the minute with that coming out. So, um, I don't know, maybe I'll go back and start reading these if I get into a bit of a Turtles mood. I love this series. Anyone who's not started reading the Turtles, this is, everyone says it is the best incarnation of the Turtles that exists. So, yeah. Um, and then a bit of a random one. Um, so I noticed this book, which is the, uh, Matrix comics. I know back when the, I think the second and third films was coming out, they did a lot of different, um, comics based on the universe by a ton of different creators and collected them all in a couple of trade paperbacks. Uh, one of which I managed to get. Um, I think I picked it up for like 50p from Zavi or something back when it was an actual shop. Um, and uh, yeah, I love The Matrix. I think, um, yeah, I'm a bit of an apologist for even the second and third films. I actually really love them. I think they get a lot of stick for, well, I wouldn't say no reason. There's definitely some reason, but I could probably do a whole video on why I think The Matrix sequels get a bit of a uh, undeserved hate. 
Um, but yeah, one of the things about this series is the creators on it. So, I mean, just look at the list here. You've got the Wachowskis, Neil Gaiman, some amazing artists, uh, Bill Sinkovich, Jeff Darrow, Tim Sale, Michael Oming, Tommy Lee Edwards. And yeah, it's a bit of an anthology book. So obviously with that amount of talent on the book and just kind of different um, random writers and artists just doing lots of short stories. So I, I love anthology books. I think they're great. I really like the idea of um, the Matrix universe as a whole. Um, even what they did with it in the second and third films, I thought it was great. Saw this book and thought, hey, I can get the whole thing rather than just uh, be stuck with the half of the stories in the trade paperback that I picked up for like 50p or whatever it was. So yeah, um, that's it for my haul this month. Again, it was quite a big one compared to what I intended it to be. I am determined to not say that every month and I'm definitely running out of space soon, which if all goes well, you guys will see soon. I know I'm slowly approaching 100 subscribers and I feel like it's a bit of a tradition maybe to do something like a, a celebratory milestone video for reaching, you know, like 100. And maybe I'll do like a, a room tour of, of my shelves and, and all my books and put it in a video for you guys to see. I know everyone loves looking at each other's setup. I know some of you probably want to see that just to see where the hell I'm going to fit all these books. So if that's something you guys want to see, please let me know. I'll uh, I'll have to find a new place for all these books and then sort that out, I guess. So uh, leave a comment down below yeah, if that's something you're interested in seeing. And tell me if there's any books on this video that you've picked up this month. Have you read any yet? What did you think? Any books that you're excited to get? Let me know. Um, let's start a conversation. Always happy to see what you guys are reading. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.